Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In today's video, we're going to talk about SAQ training or speed, agility, quickness training and looking in chapter 21 at the acute variables coming from a, a question that a student had asked me about how as is always the case with the acute variables, particularly in chapter 21, how do you memorize all this information? I will say this, that the tables, the charts that they do give you, and it's for each phase of the OPT model. So obviously stabilization phase one, and then the uh, strength and then the power uh, going through phase two, three. So there's one, two, three, four, five different phases. And there's a chart for each one of them that gives you all the acute variables. Remember, reps, sets, things like that. Those are the acute variables of training. Um, when it comes to memorizing this information, um, of course, there's always sort of the standard. You can read it, rewrite it, say it out loud. That's going to help you in one sense from a memorization perspective. You could um, also just try to take the table itself and just mimic the table and try and write the table over and over and over until you have memorized it. And then uh, on a consistent basis, continue to try and uh, write it, rewrite it, obviously looking at it, saying it out loud. Um, and then there's also kind of a tip here is to try and make connections between all of the actual tables for all of the five uh, five different phases that you're that you're looking at, and what I'm talking about is that when you're in chapter 21, okay, so this is uh, the stabilization, and I've just I've just pulled this up on the on the textbook. So phase one stabilization endurance training synopsis. Remember, uh, tables in chapter 21 are going to go from table 21.9. Uh, 21, 10, 11, 12, obviously through the different, uh, through each of the different phases. But here's what I want. Here's what I want you to kind of focus in on is in particular, and this student was asking about the SAQ or the speed, agility, quickness. Okay. A couple of things to keep in mind here when it comes to SAQ training, first and foremost, from a, a purely testing perspective, it's not heavily represented on the test. Will they ask you questions related to SAQ? Yeah, they will. Um, and they'll also have it embedded in the answer key as one of the options in other questions related to the information that you see, for instance, in chapter 21. Um, as is always the case, memorization, understanding the material is one thing. If you can somehow or another make it make it a little bit more real world for you, then that's that's fine as well. It could help you depending on your learning style. The other thing to keep in mind, if you've got two weeks to take your exam and you're not very comfortable with the material, it's probably lower on the priority uh, level here when it comes to what you want to know in the uh, in the acute variable tables, okay? If you have three months to study and you're already sort of familiar with the material and information, then absolutely read through this. It's great information, very helpful, uh, especially if you're uh, being very sort of specific in your training program outline. That's why they do this for you is they're giving you precision and specificity. But let's kind of take a look because what I did is I just pulled out phase one stabilization endurance. Keep in mind each of the tables that you see here. Next will be... Uh, phase two for, for the strength, the three strength phases that they have in the OPT model, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the, um, and then the last one power. <clears throat> but the idea is that if you can connect, <clears throat> this is what I normally do is I take each of these tables and I basically put them next to each other. <clears throat> you can do that by copying and pasting it. However you want to do it. That's one way to do it <clears throat> is to grab each table put them next to each other, kind of take a look at what is consistently the same. And you are going to find a lot of consistency, a lot of similarity. This is one of the ways, and I'll just, I'll give you a great example here. So let's look at speed, agility, see what I'm pointing to, speed, agility, and quickness. And we're just going to take a look at this one row. <clears throat> so what they do is they give you a warm up, um, activation, skill development, Yada, yada, all the way down. By the way, this is going to be the most important one. If you're going to memorize anything on these charts, it's going to be the resistance training uh, variables, okay? That's the recommendation. 
uh, because you're going to get probably more questions on resistance training variables related to resistance training than any of the other rows. But again, I'm I'm doing this to kind of help this um, answer this one question. SAQ training, it's optional, particularly in um, uh, level one. <clears throat> so it's optional. But let me let me go ahead and show you something uh, real quick here. So one to three sets, one to three reps. And I just want you to kind of get an idea when you look at SAQ training in particular, just kind of get an idea of exactly what type of uh, programming SAQ training really demands, okay? Obviously, there's going to be, um, uh, you know, moderate amount of, of uh, training. The tempo is going to be moderate. Rest time is going to be upwards to a minute and a half. And then notice the intensity level, NA. And I want you to kind of keep in mind a couple of these, a couple of these variables here. And I'm going to get out of here and let's move forward into the, and if you have the digital book, you know what I'm doing right now, making it through. <clears throat> and so if we look at uh, the different phase uh, phase two, strength endurance, phase three, muscular development, phase four is maximal strength training. Okay. If you look at the, if you look at the charts, okay. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the chart. So here's phase two, strength endurance, uh, strength endurance. So let's go to SAQ and well, okay, one to three on the first one, one to three there. So your reps and your sets are different. Moderate now goes to fast, zero to 60 seconds, and there's your NA. So what I'm saying is that when you look at just the intensity component in the SAQ part on any of these tables, okay, keep that, keep that fresh in your head. Let's move on to the next one. That's phase two. Phase three, what do you notice? And A on the intensity, uh, what do you notice about your reps and your sets and your tempo? And see, it's the same thing. So phase two and phase three for SAQ training is, for the most part, the same. Well, what about phase four? Let me open that guy up. <clears throat> what do you notice? Same, 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 same. I hope this makes sense because... For SAQ, I just want to make sure that if you're studying this, you don't get all freaked out that you're trying to memorize a ton of information. Now, of course, now we can go to, so that was the strength and that was in that one lesson. Now we get to the power level and what is different in the SAQ for power. And I'm just kind of pushing through here so you can get an idea. <clears throat> SAQ training, the only difference that you're going to see the number of reps are the same. Why? Because it's explosive power. So you might do more sets. That's, yeah, you may. That's, but you see the difference. Not that big of a difference. The only difference on the tempo is that it's explosive, but you should already know that because what's the deal with power training? We try to do things as explosive as powerful, obviously, because power is the amount of work over time. So explosive movements. What do you notice about the rest period and the intensity? Yes, they're the same as the other ones. Kind of the idea is that when you look at when you look at these tables in chapter in chapter 21 and you're getting freaked out about the acute variables, again, first and foremost, SAQ training, not a big part of the questions that you're going to get on the exam, although it's important. And you will get questions for sure about SAQ training. Um, it's just not a huge part, a huge part of the testing. Okay. Uh, if you're looking at the tables, what's one of the best ways to do it? Look at the, look at the uh, similarities from one table to the next, from one of the, from the rows in phase one, all the way to phase five. And what do you notice in SAQ? It's all pretty much the same. So again, you could now, again, there's two ways that I recommend students do this is you would rewrite the entire table, all the rows, all the variables, and that'll take you a fair amount of time. Or you can take one row at a time. And the most important row, just from a testing perspective, as I, as I told you, is 
Let me pull it back up here for you. Right here, the resistance. So that's the first row that I would recommend in table 21, um, 9, 10, 11, right? All those tables that have your um, have your compilation of all the acute variables. Resistance training is key. Now, look, if you look at the table, it looks pretty complicated. We got, wow, all this information, all this information. Well, look, for the client's choice, that's not a big that's not anything that you really need to memorize. So if you wanted to, you can kind of create your own table. Create your own table. And in your table for phase five, you would just write what is really important. And that's going to be the resistance training, the warm up component, the, the warm down, the resistant. All of those are going to be, well, for the most part, they're going to be very similar. Look for the similarities in each of those tables. That's what I'm trying to get at with this. Again, for SAQ training, interesting, good material, good information. Not sure how much of it you're going to actually use with the average client. But when you look at those tables and you're trying to understand acute variables, <clears throat> your reps and your sets, very similar. Um, intensity is NA for, for all of them. Uh, zero to 90 seconds on rest time, zero to 60 for the majority of them. Um, tempo is moderate, fast, or explosive. And you already know it's explosive because in the power phase five, that's power. So it's got to be explosive. So I hope that, hope that makes sense. Just keep in mind, when it comes to trying to memorize this material, you go through just like with anything else. You start at the chapter level, read through it real quick, and then start to uh, spend time on those, those uh, elements in that particular chapter that are of higher uh, priority and importance. Remember, if you've got three weeks, well, if you got three days, three weeks or three months, very different study strategy because now you've got to hone in less time you have. You got to hone in on the most pertinent information. And in general, not all the time, but in general, like in chapter 21, it's those tables. So if you don't have a whole lot of time or you're you're trying to you're trying to as much information as quickly as you can, you focus on the tables and that's where that's where the majority of the questions from that particular area is probably going to come from on the actual exam as always if you need more uh, specific targeted uh, information and exam prep just click on the link below that we have that we have down there for the nasm exam prep itself we've got videos audio quizzes for every single chapter in the um in the textbook, right? All 23 chapters, seventh edition. And, um, and that could be very, very helpful quizzes, um, practice exams, um, the whole nine yards, right? So if you want, that's the way to go for a full in-depth study. As always, if you have questions or comments about this particular video, please leave them below. If you have not done so, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell. And also, if you haven't gone over, if you're watching this straight from uh, YouTube, just go ahead and uh, move on over to the private Facebook group. We've got over 10,000 folks in there, just like just like you, that are trying to pass the exam. So like-minded, asking questions, trying to help each other out, go to our Facebook group, and, um, and you can jump in there, ask questions about any of the topics uh, um, in the actual NASM textbook itself, as always. We're here to help you out. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.